for me to make some more money in Miami. If we could stay in Miami, don't do what? He said, just delivering dope and picking up money. Maybe once in a while, push somebody around. We decided to stay for a couple of weeks. So what he told me was just to watch one of his stash houses. That was the first time that we were working in, with people that were in the drug business, but later on, they were pussycats. After we learned our own, the trade, and we learned how to use guns, and, and we met different people, there were nobody, they were pussycats, boy scouts. Cruz had our, our next military, an old man. As soon as I met him, I liked the guy. And he started telling me he was in the military for so many years, and he was a, a demolition expert. So I started asking him a lot of questions about explosives and automatic weapons. So I went in the next room and got one. I was a Mac 10. I said, I wanted to learn how to take it apart, clean it. We started going off to the Everglades and shooting our machine guns. I learned. I got pretty good at it also. From the first day I, I held a, a Mac 11 in my hands, I knew that was my favorite choice of weapon. Then he says, um, you want to learn how to use explosives? I said, yeah. He said, you got good nerves? I said, pretty steady. He says, oh, we have some dynamite coming from Texas in a few days. I'm going to teach you how to make mine. The next day, the dynamite arrived with the detonators. He took four sticks of dynamite and deten detonators. And he started just going through it, you know, basically showing me how to do it. About two hours later, he said, you think you can build one? I said, I think so. So I did. I said, the only thing they need is just uh, plug it to the battery and to the timer. He said, can you do that? And um, I mean, my kids are sleeping in the next room, my wife. And he, he was just trying me. I said, sure, how much time you want on it? He said, how about 30 seconds? Go ahead. And I did. We let the clock run. He was sitting in front of me. About 10 seconds went by, 15. He said, you know, and I know that 10 seconds going to go off. I said, I know. You want to shut it off or you want to shut it off? So he smiled and he, he put the plug on it. Then he says, you're good at it. You know, just make sure that when you're doing it, don't be on drugs, don't drink, because you blow your kids up. A couple weeks went by, we were in a nightclub in Miami. Flacco came in. He says, look, you know, you need to get out of here, because we're fixing to do a hit here. You need to get your people out. Those people on your right, with six Colombians laughing and drinking fire water, Colombian I went into. We're going to spray that table, the whole table. And I said, all right, appreciate it. You know, I said, let me get my guys. I went back to the bathroom, and I told him, I said, we got to go. It's going to be a shootout here. He said, just give me a minute. I walked out. Well, during that time, Vanegas had stopped at the same table by accident and told the guys to leave because there was going to be a shootout. So he screwed up the hit. It was just an accident. Apparently, he knew one of the guys at the table, so that he was just looking out for his friend, told him to leave because it was going to be a shooting. I was outside. Vanegas came out. Behind Vanegas, everybody started pushing each other out. Flacco came in his motorcycle. He was pretty pissed off. He said, you guys fucked everything up. You know, I should have never told you nothing. I said, yeah, we did it, man. You know, it was an accident. He says, well, you're in trouble, man. You know, you're in trouble with my boss. The boss wants to meet you. I said, no problem. So we got in the car, we got a 995. And then on the way, I'm telling him, I said, these people are gonna kill me, are they? He says, I don't know. I don't make no guarantees, man. We have fucked something up. And I, I mean, they talk about killing six people. So you know there ain't no, no pussies here. So we drove to a Holiday Inn on I-95 in Miami. I looked and four guys got out of our car. I said, oh, is that them? He said, that's them, that's part of them. There's more to your left. And I looked, there was four of the guys on the other side getting out of the car. I approached the older guy was there. He says, are you Rivi? I said, yes, I am. He says, come with me. Got him back of a car, and in the back seat was a lady. And she asked me, she said, you the one that fucked up the hill last night? And I said, in a way I did. And she told me I've been after these people for months. And that's the only first, the first time that we got uh, sight on them. And I, I have fucked it up. She says, well, I'll tell you what, you find them and we call it even. I'm interested in the two brothers. The other four were just gonna hit because they were sitting at the table. I said, you were gonna kill four other people just to kill two? She said, that's the way I do my things. Get everybody the way. I said, what, it wouldn't have been easy just to kill two? She said, no, it would have been easy to kill all six of them. Spray the whole table instead of walking up to one apiece. That surprised me, you know. I mean, she's talking to murder like, so I told her, I said, just give me a week, I find these people. So when we got back to the hotel, I told the guys what happened, and Banegas was there. And I said with him, I said, look, we in deep shit with this lady. If we don't find these people, we're gonna have to haul ass, because they're gonna come after. They told me in so many words. He says, well, he's a friend of mine, I know him. I said, you know him? So you, we hold him? I said, yeah. 
I said, if you can get hold of him, then we got this under control. He said, yeah, I could get hold of one, the older one. I said, that's what we need, one. To him, we get the other one. I said, do this. Let's go to a payphone and beep him and set up a meeting for tonight. And we're going to kidnap his ass, and we're going to turn it over to these other people. And he beeped it, they got answered. He set up a meeting at the Ramada Inn back parking lot. He told me that we had some guns and some explosives for sale. Sure enough, the guy came in about 8 o'clock. It was already dark. He's talking, laughing with Banegas. I'm behind a tree. And Banegas opened the trunk. I came up behind the tree. I put a gun in his ribs. I've been looking for you. So the guy says, how are you? Nothing. I said, no, you know, someone else needs you. There's a lady looking for you. Her name is Grisada Blanco. He turned white. He said, you're going to meet her in a couple of hours. He started shaking. So about an hour later, they arrived. They took him. The next day, I'm at home, about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. She comes to my house. My wife was frying fish. So she says, she just knocks and comes in, like she owns the house. She says, oh, I love fish. So I told my wife to fry her fish. She's eating, telling me how they killed this guy and chop him up in little pieces while we were having dinner. I said, what are you talking about? You, didn't, you shot this guy? She said, yeah, I shot him. And then um, Tulio and Kumbamba cut him up and put him in a small box and wrapped them up like a gift with a little bow on top. And we left her a couple blocks from here on the turnpike. I said, in my neighborhood? She said, yeah, we're heading south to come and visit you. So we figured it was a good spot to, to drop them off. We dropped them off on the turnpike. I said, you guys usually do that? She said, yeah, she likes it. She likes us to cut people up and just throw them like that. Syntac is also hoping to untangle the drug organizations of Griselda Blanco, a flamboyant woman nicknamed by the Colombian newspapers La Madrina, or Godmother. Well, we can't say for sure exactly when she was in Miami, probably 78. We didn't know where, obviously, because she was a fugitive, and we knew she was a multi-kilo dealer. She was the biggest back then. She was the godmother of the cocaine trade. Bloody, dramatic, took no prisoners. She is suspected of up to 15 murders and now is in hiding. 1979. 80, 81, and 82. Those were the years where she did her killing in Dade County. In that very, very Latino culture, it's not usual that a woman would be the head of her own organization. So I figured that she had to have been one mean lady. She is considered a very dangerous woman. She will pull the trigger herself if given the chance. Police say Griselda Blanco began years ago as a bank robber then entered the drug trade, working and killing her way to the top. The role of Griselda Blanco became very, very prominent in what we were calling the cocaine wars. The first homicide of, of note that um, she's involved with is Dayland, which, of course, is July 1979. Police believe the Dayland shootout was simply payback for another incident here on the Florida Turnpike. In the infamous highway shooting, where people were going down the highway shooting at each other, those two killings were linked. Three months before Dadeland, two carloads of Colombian traffickers got into a high-speed machine gun shootout here. When police finally stopped one of the two cars, they looked in the truck and found a body, handcuffed and strangled to death. Police believe the victim, Jaime Suscon, was ordered killed by Herman Jimenez, the man who died at Dadeland. There are many people who paid the price because they fell out of favor with Griselda Blanca. There was an infamous case linked to her. Police suspect in November 1980, during morning rush hour traffic near a Miami airport hotel, the godmother's assassins killed a woman named Graciela Gomez. Graciela Gomez ran afoul of the godmother. Not a, not a good thing to do. The result was jealous of her because she was an attractive young female. Informants say Gomez had stolen some cocaine and had a romantic fling with the godmother's lover. It might have been some revolver with Dario. Both fatal mistakes. She was in a Corvette, northbound on Red Road. Stopped at a red light. Griselda's hitman, Kumbamba, and there's a guy named Zapata. They were following her, and she knew they were following her. She recognized them. As Gomez drove in her Corvette, shots were fired from a passing car. The shots missed. She got afraid, and she jumped out of her vehicle, went to a vehicle, stopped the traffic in front of her, pleading for help. This couple, man and wife, allowed her to get in the backseat of their vehicle, not knowing what was going on. As the astonished couple watched in horror, the assassin walked up to their passenger window, pushed them aside, and fired point blank into the backseat. Shot through the window, killing Graciela in the backseat of this couple's car. Then they walked back to their car. They didn't run back to their car. Witnesses said they walked back to their car. The couple, meantime, scrambled from the car to escape physical harm, but there was an emotional toll. The wife felt the...